for Washington and Jefferson College head coach Mike Siriani and student athletes Alex Rouse, Mauricio Garibay, and O'Shea Anderson. Coach, your opening remarks. Uh, just a terrific football game between two good football programs, two what I think are programs that do it the right way um, uh, at the Division Three level. Um, Johns Hopkins obviously is, is coached, coached very well, and you know we were fortunate to come on top. It just a, it's a great, great way to. I mean, anyone doesn't like playoff football, um, uh, come watch this game. What a terrific football game! And I'll answer this right off the bat too, because I'm sure I'm going to be asked about it. You know, obviously we've struggled kicking the ball all year um, with extra points and field goals, and this is a true story. I'm not making this up. My, you know, my my youngest brother is the receivers coach for the Chargers, um, and I. It's clockwork. Every Friday at 9:30, while I'm typing my game plan, I get a phone call from him, and it, you know, you usually talk about something, whether you know it's our kids or something else. Well, this week the conversation was, why are you kicking? Why are you going for the on fourth and 18 from your own 20-yard line all the time? Why are you doing that? And I'm like, well, we haven't really been successful kicking the ball. Was, there was a couple other um, words I used in that too, and he's like, well, he's like, your your odds of making a field goal, even if you kick your youngest daughter, are better than you getting fourth and 19 because they're going to just put everyone back of the sticks. And I'm, as I as I decided whether to kick it or not, and I actually decided on third down to kick it, um, I'm, I, that's exactly what I thought about. So, you know, good and a dog. I'm sure I was going to get asked that, but that's exactly why we decided to kick that ball, that conversation, because if I didn't have it, I don't know what we would have done. We still might be playing. Our, um, the question I have about the field goal is, how far has he made him in practice, and how confident were you that he was going to he was going to make this one when he's had such problems in the past? Well, the, his problems aren't from distance. When he gets a hold of kickoffs and when he gets a hold of the ball, he can kick it. He made a 47-yarder in our scrimmage with Mount Union. It wasn't rushed. We don't rush in our scrimmage, but he did make a 47-yarder from the other hash, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah, from the other hash. So I knew he had the leg. If he if he if the problem that he has had, and he's a freshman, no, he's, he, all he's going to do is get better. It's just inconsistent. The problems he's had is, does he make real good contact, okay, um, and does he pull his hips through, and I know nothing about kicking. So I knew that he could make it from that far. I just wasn't sure. I knew we were going to have the distance if he got a hold of it. I just, you know, the ball could have went everywhere. I mean, I don't know. It could have went to the 10. I, but I knew at least that he, he, if, he, if he struck it cleanly, I knew that he could make the distance, and it was fourth and – I don't even remember, fourth and 16. And again, that, that conversation, I'm like, there's no way we're getting this. Um, uh, so I was actually going to run it down as long as I can. It's on the clock to, to take it down to 20 seconds and kick it then. But Hopkins called a timeout. Um, and my, my thought was, if we're not going to make it, we're going to go to overtime. So, um, and he, clutch kick, kick. I mean, clutch, I mean, unbelievable kick. And, you know, uh, you know we're fortunate to win. Do you normally watch the field goal attempts? I, <laughs> I don't watch the extra points. Now, no, I normally don't. I watched this one. I did. I'm like, I told Coach Spence. So I talked to Coach Spence on the headsets. I'm like, I'm, I'm watching this one. And is it? Is it? I saw it, it. It looked like it was veering right, and it was hooking. I'm like, he made it. I said that before the ball went there. Then it hit the goal, the, the upright, and went over. And you know, uh, unbelievable, great kick. A little. Hey, listen, a little lucky. Sure, why not? Um, but as I said numerous times this year, sometimes it's better to be lucky and blessed than it is good, and we'll we'll take it. Let's talk a little bit about uh, O'Shea's interception at, at the four-yard line because I thought that was a real key point in the game. What kind of defense were you in, and what was your view on it? Honestly, I have no idea because I let Coach LeVar do the defense by himself. Um, he does a great job. Our defense has been great all year. Um, we held, uh, you know, they, they, you know, when Nick Murgo went out today, our middle linebacker, they, they found some rushing room, and so I know people are going to see that in the upcoming rounds. Um, but to hold that quarterback to 23 of 50, you know, below 50 percent, and they were and they were a juggernaut the last three weeks. They've been playing really good. I thought Coach Lavaro does a great job. So honestly, I have no idea what the call was. Um, I just saw Shea does a good job of jumping routes. He jumps them in practice. He went through the receiver to get the ball and just made it uh, O'Shea Anderson play. He's been making those plays all year. Um, He's been making them the last three years. He's just a terrific football player, and I just saw a terrific football player make a terrific play at a really important time, and that's what, that's what playing football is all about, especially in playoff games. He made a great play at a real important time. What did you think of uh, Alex's uh, return and how he did in the game? Um, listen, no one deserves this more than Alex Rouse. I mean, I'll stand by my statement that he, 
is one of the best quarterbacks in the conference when healthy. Um, he wasn't the first team all conference quarterback like when I said at the beginning of the year he's going to be. I think he would have been. It would have been close if he was healthy all year. But he, he deserves this. He, you know, he waited his turn for three years to come out and play the way he did. And he, he, I mean, I don't want to say rusty, but he made a couple mistakes. Um, but but that, nothing that that he was. He never gets his. He never gets down. Um, but I to, to not play for four weeks and then come out here and throw 36 completions for almost 400 yards in a playoff game. Um, it's pretty special, and, and he, he deserves this. And you know, and you know, we, we needed every completion and every yard today. But he, no one deserves this more than him. Alex, was the plan coming in today to to drop back that many times? And it seemed like it was something today where the pass sort of led to to opening up lanes for the running game. Is that sort of what you were seeing out there too? Yeah, we definitely thought that. Uh, Front, they were good up front, so we knew we were going to be able to throw the ball a lot. <clears throat> so that was in our game plan. Uh, and then we knew if we started hitting our run pass options a lot, then it starts to open up um, the running game a little bit, get some people out of the box because they were worried about uh, you know throwing the ball to Jesse and Cody and receivers like that. So definitely helped our run game to start throwing the ball a little bit in the beginning and then led to a successful run game at the end. And then three wide receivers today. You spread the ball around three receivers with over 100 yards. What what was working for each one of them today? Um, I think they all just played their role. Uh, we always have a great uh, game plan for games. Um, everyone knows their spot. They know that they could get the ball at any time. We don't ever really call plays just for one receiver. You know, we usually go through progressions and whatever the defense gives us, we take. So. Mauricio, what was going through your mind there um, leading up to, to the field goal? Is that a situation where you're, you're expecting uh, Coach Sirianni to call on you? And then once he does, what uh, keep it clean, please. What, uh, what, what's going through your mind? Um, well, as Coach Sirianni said, uh, he called uh, the field goal on third down. He said he was going to kick it. Um, <clears throat> and through my mind, I was just trying to stay composed, just trying to get a clean strike on the ball. Because I knew if I did that, it was going to go in. Um, like Coach Shirani said, I have the range. I was confident. I just needed to make sure the ball was right down the line. And then that's the fifth longest field goal in, in school history. For it to come in a situation like this, is that is that something that you can carry momentum through not only this the rest of this season, but your career moving forward? Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, I plan to work really hard in the off season. Um, just to continue, continuously get better. Um, one day I want to be something that you don't see at the D3 level. Um, just want to be great. O'Shea, I mean, your seventh interception of the season, uh, nice nice break on the ball. You had a couple earlier in the game that you, that you made a great break on too, but uh, – didn't go your way. What what worked on that play that didn't necessarily when you you had the two penalties earlier? Um, I was really focused on that play. Um, the formation. Well, back to the question you asked, Coach. But uh, the defense were in. It was a three by one set on the on the three side. They were in zone on my side. I was one on one, manned up. Um, I kind of just like I knew they were going to go at him. That number eighty two that they have. He's a great receiver. Uh, our coaches were yelling from the sideline that um, watch the slant, watch the slant. So I was ready for it. Uh, I, I jumped it, made a good play on it. We were like tugging for the ball. I didn't know who were they going to give it to. I ended up with it and um, made, just make it a, uh, made a play for my team. And now that that's seven interceptions a season. That's a that's fifth in program history in a season. What what has been the difference? You had you had four in your career coming into this year. What's been the the difference that's allowed you to to convert those breakups into interceptions? Um, I would say just hard work in the offseason and practice. Um, my first two years, I was I was always there on the ball, on the on the ball, and uh, I just didn't get interceptions. I'd make the pass breakups. I was really looking for that coming into this season. That was way more interceptions. Um, I think I did a pretty good job at that. Uh, and I'm just looking for any way to help my team win, and I did that today. Mauricio. Did you ever lose confidence in yourself when you were struggling with uh, your kicks this season? And were you surprised that uh, they, they, uh, Coach Suriani sent you in to try that field goal? Um, I don't think I ever lost confidence. Um, if anything, if I'm not the one kicking, starting kicking, it boosts my confidence to just try to work a lot harder. Um, I really want to get that spot back. And uh, that's something that I'm really determined on.
Did you think he was going to try the field goal, or did, did you think he had something else in mind when he lined up? The, the kicking coach, uh, he was telling me, if it's a long field goal, um, we're going to send you in. And so I just prepared myself mentally and just got the job done. What's the longest you've made in practice? A 55-yard field goal. 55, you Yes, said? yes. And this was an optimum day. It's cold, it's wet, the ball's probably heavy. So when you made contact, did you feel you made strong enough contact to get it uh, down to the goal post? Um, at 46 yards, I do believe that just swinging my leg through would get me, get me there, yes. Any other questions for Coach or the student-athletes? Thanks, guys.